This morning, former President Jimmy Carter is receiving hospice care at his home in Plains, Georgia. That is according to the Carter Center, the Atlanta based nonprofit founded by the former president. Just one of several humanitarian projects through the years. Joining me now is Chuck Todd, moderator of Meet the Press. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning. So we are monitoring former President Jimmy Carter and his health now that it has been announced mm -hmm. that he has entered home hospice care. So this morning, I want to talk to you about his legacy after his presidency. You know, for so many presidents, that's a big yeah. question. You know, you've reached the top. What do you do next to make a difference? Um, through the Carter Center and his work with Habitat for Humanity, President Carter arguably created a legacy as lasting as his presidency once he left the Oval Office. How do you think people will look upon those years? I, look, I think it's it's universal praise. I mean, that's the the other thing. He did something that's pretty difficult in our our divisive political times. Is I think he had a post presidency that was um, that was you know certainly almost a unifying themes. You know, building homes for people that need it, trying to uh, help uh, negotiate peace, oversee elections, promote democracy as the Carter Center and the, and the role it played throughout the country throughout the years. So I think in many ways, what Jimmy Carter did and has done with his post-presidency is create a blueprint for how, what our former presidents should use there. You know, you have a moment, you have a platform, and how do you use that platform effectively? And I think there's no doubt Jimmy Carter has figured out how to use that platform of the ex-presidencies in a way and in a more effective way than anybody who's ever held that office. And has truly become one of the great humanitarians of our time. Um, let's take a quick dip back in history and see if we can draw a parallel here as I ask you this next question. You have Secretary mm -hmm. of State Antony Blinken on your show this morning. We were in the Cold War during Carter's presidency, uh, among others, but mm -hmm. now some would say we're in a Cold War with China. How do you think we handle this one? It's a great question. I mean, in some ways, we're, I think, doing similar things that we did in uh, the Cold War with the Soviets, right? With the Soviets, it was about uh, making sure we knew who our friends were and who they were. We tried to bring them closer. Sometimes that meant military aid. Sometimes that meant military support. And what did we also want to do? We wanted to bog down our adversary. You know, Jimmy Carter, uh, one of, you know, we talked, there's a lot of things about his presidency get brought up in a negative light. You have the Iran hostages, you have the inflation, you know, but he greenlit uh, uh, the decision to covertly arm the insurgency in Afghanistan. That was a huge decision. It had, it's had lots of consequences to it, obviously, that uh, when it comes to uh, Afghanistan, the country, but it also arguably turned the tide on the Cold War. Right, helping to essentially bankrupt the Soviet Union, uh, both on the world stage on ideas, but also financially in the cost that the that the war in Afghanistan made it. And really, that was that, that was the arguably one of the biggest decisions to help weaken and defeat the Soviet Union in the Cold War. So um, now, how we left Afghanistan is a whole other issue, uh, and may have created the conditions that ended up. Uh, uh, it ended up uh, paying a price uh, in 9-11 and beyond. But I do think we shouldn't overlook what happened in the late 70s and the decisions that President Carter made that did help uh, end the Cold War. Always interesting to take a look back in history, see how we can apply it to today's issues. They always seem to somehow repeat themselves. Chuck, thanks so much. Meet the Press airs at 10 right after 11 Alive Thank Weekend you, Morning Christine. News.